Steppin' Out is made possible in part by Susie and Pierre G. Villery. With a continued passion for public television, we are proud to underwrite Steppin' Out. Please join us in supporting WYES television. The New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Foundation promotes, preserves, and perpetuates music, culture, and heritage through programs, cultural, educational, and economic activities year-round. Learn more at jazzandheritage.org. The American Italian Cultural Center and Museum on South Peters in New Orleans offers event venue space, Italian language classes, dual citizenship and translation services, seminars, genealogy, and trips to Italy. Ciao, AmericanItalianCulturalCenter.com. This program is brought to you in part by the Eugenie and Joseph Jones Family Foundation, a local foundation proud to support education, the arts, and culture in the greater New Orleans area. Scott Laborde and welcome to Steppin' Out with updates from the local restaurant, arts, and entertainment scenes. Joining me, she's back, Poppy Tucker, <laughs> host of Louisiana Eats, hey, Miss Poppy on WWNO Radio. Hello. Hello, Peg. He's also back, Alfred Richard, movie critic for WWL TV. Howdy. Hello, Hello there, Peggy. Alan Smason, editor of the Crescent City Jewish News and theatercriticism.com. Yes. Hello. And later, We'll visit with jazz musicians Dr. Ben Redwine and Don Vappi, who will let us know about an upcoming concert and perform for us as well. Poppy, for some folks, this weekend is viewed as hog heaven. <laughs> sorry, hog sorry. Heaven. <laughs> Absolutely. And of course, you're refer referring to Hogs for the Cause, which this weekend, starting tomorrow, Friday, will be having their 15th celebration. And to think that all of that began with a single whole hog cooked in a backyard by <laughs> Becker Hall and Renee Luap. And, you know, they did that to help raise some money for their friend, little Ben Surratt. Well, now, 15 years later, they have given away six million dollars. Mm. This weekend, the big event at the UNO Arena Grand Grand Area is going to feature 90 teams, okay? And it all starts off tomorrow night with Bacon and Wings. Bacon and Wings <laughs> runs from 3.30 till 11 p.m. Saturday is 11 a.m. until on Saturday. And uh, the bacon and wings is the focus Friday night, but by Saturday it's barbecue of every sort in competition in 15 categories. And the spectacle, like you saw that <laughs> pig jumping in the air and the costumes, the decorations, it is a spectacle. There's a kids area. There's a music stage, of course, where 23 different acts will be performed this weekend. I'm telling you, it is just nothing but fun. All day, all night, go to Hogs for the Cause and eat it up for a good cause. <laughs> and it's such fun. So, and of course, Hogs for the Cause definitely means that festival season is right upon us. And I have some scoop about festival season. And that is, who knew that Donald Link and Amanda Shaw were best buds, but apparently they are. There they are, cutting up down at Chemina La Mer. And Donald has invited his buddy Amanda to come back this year for Afternoons with Amanda. And I was up there a couple of Saturdays ago when it got started. This is gonna, yes, happen on Holy Saturday too. From noon until three, you just make reservations and go have oysters at the bar there, have a lovely lunch, and Amanda Shaw will be performing just Sweet. for you oh. in that ah. beautiful little dining room with the view of the river. This is fantastic. Mm. Mm. But 
you know, if you're not going to be there this Saturday, but it is noon until 3, <laughs> I've got something on Saturday that everybody should turn out for <laughs> here at WYES at 2 o'clock. Of course, we are so excited about the debut of the Dookie Chase Kitchen, Leah's Legacy. Yes. And this 26-part series, which is going to begin airing on April the 29th, well, everybody gets a preview this Saturday. And, of course, Dook the Fourth and Eve, the grands, Zoe, the great grand, and then, of course, Cleo, Leah's niece, will be here. They'll be, I'll be the hostess with the most that day. We'll be doing interviews. Cleo is going to demonstrate griots and grits. <laughs> Aside from <clears throat> tastes of that, there'll be Leah's gumbo chicken creole, peach cobbler, and a vodka lavender lemonade. It's going to be so much fun. And boy, those chases are doing Leah proud. Absolutely. And we are delighted to actually give a little bit of a sneak peek at one of the episodes. Oh, boy. Let's take a look. Here I have some fresh thyme. And then here I have some fresh rosemary. And as you can see, I made a nice bed, a nice basket for me to lay these pork chops on. So here I have a little chicken stock. This is going to deglaze our pan last. If you don't have chicken stock, a little water will do. And you can see it's starting to simmer a little bit. You want to keep it at a low simmer so it doesn't reduce too fast. And that's right when it gets there. That's when you want to start to add these right back. So April 29th, the big day, but April 1st, come and see Poppy and Dook and cooking demos and food at WIS. Thank you, Poppy. Thanks, Peg. And moving over to Alfred's with some scary kind of stuff, huh? Yes, it is. <laughs> it's time for another place of monsters, ghosts, and horror things. <laughs> and vampire wings, of course. It is I, Sven Gulli. No, no, it's, uh, of course, it is the Overlook Film Festival set in what the runner, the people running the festival say is New Orleans, the city with the, it's a haunted city, the most haunted city in the United States. Well, we can't deny that. The <laughs> Overlook <laughs> Film Festival is back for four days and it will conclude on April 2nd, but a lot of stars are in town for this as well. For example, now this film, Renfield, which stars Nicolas Cage as the master of evil, Dracula. Uh, I will have to admit, I worked on this film. Oh, fun. <laughs> so just for that sense of that, Nicolas Cage, there he is in his evil persona as Dracula. It's also directed by Chris McKay, who has a background as well of all things from Anchorman. Mm. the film Anchorman. Mm. So mm -hmm. expect a little tongue-in-cheek humor. There is a special screening, then special screenings throughout the time. It is going to be at the Britannia Uptown mm -hmm. and at Canal Place. That's where the festival will take place. And if you want tickets and information there, you can go to overlookfilmfest.com. But aside from a world premiere, there's also a lot of other fun things. There's going to be a special secret screening as well, and this one I'm looking forward to. It's called Matinee, starring, I guess you could say, part-time New Orleanian John Absolutely. Goodman. He portrays a film huckster, sort of like William Castle, coming up with this idea. He wants to promote a film set during the time of the Cuban Missile Crisis. The film is called Mant, Half Man, Half Ant, All Terror. So this is a movie, though, from the past that they're re resurrecting. Well, it yeah. is actually a film that was shot in the 19... It was shot around 1990, late 1990s, around mm -hmm. 2000, mm -hmm. but it's set in that time yeah. of the Cuban Missile Crisis. So it is very fun. And also director Joe Dante, who is going to be in town, who was the director for Gremlins. He is in town for this. It's going to be a plethora of horror 
and fun and humor and such, even a film called Evil Dead Rises. So you've got a <laughs> lot of different titles uh, that matter. I know this is usually not what you would usually expect, but it's a 30th anniversary, that's right, 30 years for matinee, and that's gonna be Sunday, April 2nd at 1 p.m. at the Britannia Uptown. And for those who are fans of Christopher Walken, there's going to be one of <laughs> Christopher Walken's films that we're going to show is called The Dead Zone, and this is a early film in which Christopher Walken started that move toward. Again, this is based on a Stephen King novel, and there is Christopher Walken back in those days in the 1980s, and now we also have a picture of Christopher Walken today. <laughs> Not much change in that sense, but Christopher Walken at The Dead Zone, that is going to be shown at the Overlook Film Festival. Do not uh -huh. overlook it at all, folks, because <laughs> there are so many different treats available there, but will not be too scary okay. for you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Next Thursday in Covington, there will be a concert featuring several local jazz luminaries. Earlier today, Dr. Ben Redwine of the North Shore Traditional Music Society came to our studios and shared the details and gave us a sneak preview with him, banjo guitarist Don Vappy. Ben, you are a longtime um, music professor and performer, and so Jazz Appreciation Month seems like a, like a very important goal for you. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to this concert very much. Yeah, so you've got a quite star-studded, too. Uh, folks don't realize that there is a, a tradition on the North Shore, an appreciation of jazz, with the Dewdrop uh, Inn Hall, we should say, um, and Mandeville, of course. But bringing all these New Orleans-based musicians to Covington, you put that together? Yes, I did. Um, the North Shore Traditional Music Society has been around for about 10 years. They have monthly jam sessions for um, Celtic music and bluegrass, and I lead the jam session for jazz. And uh, we got a, a grant from the uh, New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Foundation and thought it would be a great time in April, obviously, to uh, put a band together and perform for the community. Uh, Don, you look like a little kid, but you've actually been at it for quite a while. <laughs> and of course, you've got the banjo and the guitar. Uh, how long have you been playing music? Uh, let's, well, <laughs> my first professional gig was 15 years old with a fake ID at Papa Joe's on Bourbon Street. <laughs> so, oh, really? <laughs> so I'm 67. Uh -huh. Add that up. That's really hard to believe. <laughs> okay. And of course, uh, so for so long, your wife, Millie, had the, um, the uh, radio show on WWOZ, yeah. and you were on there a lot, too. Yeah, we, we did it together, but I was more mm -hmm. like uh, comedy relief. Comedy yeah. relief. <laughs> but what, I know that jazz history means a lot to both of you all. So going back, tell us what you're playing tonight. Oh, uh, we will play. Uh, well, I asked each of the musicians to contribute two pieces from jazz history that they thought were mm -hmm. important uh -huh. and one composition that they wrote or had recorded recently. Uh -huh. So it'll be a little bit of a mix of traditional jazz and modern music. So that that's for next week's concert. Yes. But what are you going to play for us? Oh, oh, sorry. I didn't that's understand. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, well, do you want to introduce the first one, Don? Um, yeah, the one we play, uh, it's a medley of, the, of an old song called the Tin Roof Blues. And I added uh, some lyrics called the Creole Blues, which I got from Albert Nicholas. And when he played with Danny Barker and Pops Foster, it's a and uh, and of course with the Tin Roof Blues, uh, the clarinet figures mightily with Leon Rapolo's favorite, very yeah, very yeah, famous exactly. solo too. So you've kind of combined them um, uh, from Tin Roof and then your own. And yeah. you also are, are really quite the composer. You write a lot, don't you? I, I've written more in my. Uh, after 50, yes. <laughs> <laughs> After 50. Yeah. And, uh, and Ben, I know we're going to close out a little later with a composition yourself, so you enjoy writing as well. I do. I don't do it very often, but that uh, composition in particular was for a silent film project I did way back when I lived in the Washington, D.C. area. Wow. And we have to uh, definitely do a plug. I know that you're now, re well, I say retired, but you keep very busy. But you actually were at Annapolis for many years, weren't you? Yes, I retired from the Naval Academy Band. Very good. Okay, well, I think I'm going to get out of the way, and we're going to hear Tin Roof Blues and Creole Blues. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you.
Jolie fille, jolie fille, pourquoi vous pas viens ici? Jolie fille, jolie fille, pourquoi vous pas viens ici? Vous connaissez mes vous? Voulez-vous pour moi, chérie? Dans cette maison, mais qu'est-ce que les filles dans cette maison? Si vous croyez moi, je sais, je sais bien attendre. Once again, Swing Into Springtime takes place next Thursday evening at the Furman Auditorium in Covington. Go to bontontix.com for tickets. Alan. Well, there's only three shows left for what I think is one of the best pairings that they have at the National World War II Museum's BB Stage Door Canteen. And this is it right here. It's called Josephine Baker. Uh, from Creole Goddess to Siren of the Resistance, and it teaches uh, all the story about Josephine Baker, the famous expatriate American uh, who became an entertainer in Paris and the heroine of the French Resistance. The show's a result of the talents of Anaïs St. John and the researcher and writer Denise Altabella, who we can see right here. Uh, although I knew about Baker's popularity as a performer in the 20s and the 30s, I had no idea that she became a member of the Maquis, who fought to free France for the Nazis. In Josephine Baker from Creole Goddess to Siren of the Resistance, Anaï sings 16 songs in a period of an hour and 45 minutes, including a 15-minute intermission. And many of the songs are sung in French, and the program itself has both the French and the English translation. Many of the songs detail her love of Paris and her iconoclastic nature. Harry Marone Jr. serves as her music director and pianist. Her costumes are designed by Julianne Lanyap. The first act starts with a silver lame number you just saw that gloriously wraps her, and after the Danse Sauvage, she dons a sheer blue gown you see there. And yes, there are feathers and fantastic songs coupled with great arrangements but you also learned something about this great lady who campaigned for women's rights fought the nazis became a crusader for civil rights here in america and was elevated to the pantheon in france uh here we see anais with other backing musicians harry marone david pulfus on bass and corey walters on drums this is a show that has some adult aspects so it's not for the very young but i really urge everyone to make plans to see the final shows this weekend and i hope that this show will be back on the schedule soon at bb stage door canteen now, over at the newly titled West Wego Cultural Center, that's on the West Bank in West Wego, the newly uh, named uh, West Wego T Cultural Center, used to be Teatro Wego, Stephen King's horror classic, Misery, has been transformed into a play. The late William Goldman wrote The Princess Bride, and it was a cult classic, but he also wrote the screenplay for the movie, of course, in which a famous romance writer, Paul Sheldon, there on the right, is captured by his number one fan, Annie Wilkes. Real life husband and wife, Eric and Reagan Lincoln, play the two major roles, with Eric having a very physical performance and Reagan driving the action with a truly chilling performance. This is labeled a dark comedy, but it would be better described as horror or terror. It's suspenseful as the two battle each other with their wits first and foremost. King stated that this 21st novel of his was written after he developed writer's block 
and also after he experienced uh, an addiction to painkillers. Uh, the set is by Derek Blanco, quite good, and the lighting by Scott Sauber. The director, Simone Daniel, dedicated a lot of time to designing the sound for the show. <laughs> I believe some of the suspense was lost in executing those sound designs. And there's David Haydell, who uh, we just saw played the local sheriff investigating the writer's disappearance. Misery ends its run on Sunday. And good news, by the way, Peggy, for those who are unable to hook a ticket for Disney's Finding Nemo Jr. at Rivertown Theaters. They just added a second show on Saturday, and that's going to be at 3 o'clock. If you've not done so already, go online and grab a ticket as soon as you can to see this one-hour children's show with music and lyrics by Kristen Anderson Lopez and her EGOT husband, Robert Lopez. That's the team behind the Frozen franchise. And I will not be able to see Urinetown because of, of my schedule, but it's currently finishing its run at Loyola University. And I want everybody to know I, I have a couple of production photos. And look at that. They, they they managed to show how cleverly they combined our own sewage and waterboard symbol into the show there. It's a morality play about big government and big business literally controlling the lives of their citizens and customers, and it will be closing on Saturday. Now, for those of you who don't know who this is, this is August Wilson, one of the greatest of America's black playwrights. 20 years ago in 2003, the playwright uh, was in a starring role of How I Learned What I Learned, a one-man autobiographical show in which he spoke about his life. Lance Nichols, our wonderfully renowned actor, has just finished playing the role in Portland, Maine, in a joint production that will be opening here in just a few weeks at Le Petit. So now's the time to get tickets and to mark your calendars because he will be an upcoming guest on here at Stepping Out, as well as Lance will be my guest on the April 10th NOLA Theater Talk Show discussing the life of August Wilson and the trajectory of his work. You can see it all there at those different sites on Facebook and on YouTube. YouTube. Thank you so much. And now time for our Picks of the Week. Poppy. James Beard final nominations came out this week from the youngest. Congratulations, Serene Mabay. Get your reservations at Dakar Nola now. They're going to be harder to get than ever. And Angelo Bricado. Go see those Bricadas. Holy moly, have a cannoli and give a big congratulations. <laughs> they right. made the cut. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Alfred. All right, where is Belazar the Cajun. Now, this is a New Orleans, Louisiana film starring Armand Asante, and you see the poster there. It was done by local director Glenn Petrie, and it is now available to stream on the Criterion Channel, wow. so you can get a chance to see a bit of Louisiana culture. Okay, great. Alice. A couple of picks for the Louisiana Philharmonic Orchestra. Opportunities to consider in the next few weeks. First of all, composers Brian Quersigu and Courtney Bryan will be at the New Orleans Jazz Museum, that's the old men, of course, for an evening of their original works with poetry readings by Chuck Perkins. That's next Thursday evening. And then hold on to your batons because Big Frida will appear <laughs> with the LPO the following Thursday, April the 13th, at the Orpheum and show us how to bounce those classics. And I'll see you at the theater. Thank you. And now my picks, the New Orleans Ragtime Festival is back Friday at the Meredy Opera House with the New Leviathan Oriental Foxtrot Orchestra. Yes. And then on Saturday at the Park Service Visitors Center that's in Dutch Alley. What an amazing lineup we've got there. Chris Tukarski, Lars Edegren, Matt Lemler, Steve Mazakowski, and Steve Pistorius and the Porch Pals. Go to New Orleans Ragtime Festival for more information on all of that. On Saturday, there'll be a reception for the showing of five of New Orleans' best-known artists at Grider Gallery on Julia Street. Mark Bercier, Jan Gilbert, Jana Napoli, Eddie Ralph Abair, and Keith Pirelli. Incredible. Grider.co. Check out the gallery website. Also on Saturday, there's Hope Fest, the first fundraiser for Hope House, a residency that it protects and assists women who and, and children who are victims of domestic abuse. Irma Thomas is performing. There's food from local restaurants and an online auction all taking place at the Zoni Mash Beer Project building that's on Thalia. It's a former movie theater. It's right off South Broad. It's by the Sewage and Waterbird, one of those treatment plants right there. Hotelhope.org. This Sunday from noon to 7.30, jewelry designer Patrice McMurray will be among the 22 artists selling their creations at Gate Fest, a mini jazz fest at the congregation Gates of Prayer on West Esplanade. 
Cowboy Mike, Lost Bayou Ramblers, and the Preservation Hall Band among the musical guests. Food available too. Go to gatesfest.org for tickets. And then finally, on Monday at 9 o'clock, WYS presents the first showing this year. We've got three coming up of the 1995 documentary called New Orleans Jazz Funerals from the Inside by David M. Jones, hosted by the late great trumpeter and band leader Milton Batiste. Check that out. It's a really wonderful show. It's full of so much good information, too. And now we leave you, though, with some more music from Dr. Ben Redwine and Don Vappy performing one of Redwine's original compositions called Remember When. Thanks for watching. Good night. <laughs> Steppin' Out is made possible in part by Susie and Pierre G. Villery. With a continued passion for public television, we are proud to underwrite Steppin' Out. Please join us in supporting WYES television. The New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Foundation promotes, preserves, and perpetuates music, culture, and heritage through programs, cultural, educational, and economic activities year-round. Learn more at jazzandheritage.org. The American Italian Cultural Center and Museum on South Peters in New Orleans offers event venue space, Italian language classes, dual citizenship and translation services, seminars, genealogy, and trips to Italy. Ciao! AmericanItalianCulturalCenter.com This program is brought to you in part by the Eugenie and Joseph Jones Family Foundation, a local foundation proud to support education, the arts, and culture in the greater New Orleans area.